everyone welcome to the geek node podcast this week we are broadcasting or shall i rather say recording live at rage expo 2016. i am your host night phoenix i'm joined by newcomer zane van heerden otherwise known as the stranger we also have with us Bernice montague from stir Kenico entertainment as well as dan remendez from nag magazine say hi everyone Hi. Hello. Hello, everybody. <laughs> great, great. Um, we're going to give it over to uh, the guests today. They, we was going to tell us a little bit about themselves and what they do at their respective firms. So, Bernice? I'm happy to go first. Um, so, I'm Bernice Montague. I head of marketing for PlayStation in South Africa. Um, as Stoke Info, obviously, we're the official distributor of PlayStation product in South Africa. And as a result of that, we also we distribute on different publishers as well. So, yeah, that in a nutshell is what, what I do. And who Fantastic. Yeah. I am Dane Remendez. I'm the editor of NAG Online. Uh, and also, sort of part time runner arounder at Rage. <laughs> pretty much my official title, I'd say. <laughs> Fantastic. And Zane, as newcomer to the team, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, well, I have wanted to do this work for a very long time. I've been a, a follower of NAG and not the, well, NAG when it was still a, a physical publication. Yay! Yeah. Uh, How we miss it, hey? How we miss it. Yeah. So much. Uh, it was always my, my monthly buy. I would remember walking into like a pick and pay and being like, where's the NAG? Where's the NAG? Until the one time when they had, uh, they filled the NAG bag with, with sand. And oh. I was like, what has happened? Why are all the articles hey, destroyed? You know, it's pretty brilliant that people still remember that. It makes me kind of happy. I mean, <laughs> I mean it's a terrible mistake, but it was a great mistake. It created many <laughs> sandy memories. <laughs> Sure. And so, yeah, then um, just a, a new writer for Geek Nerd. Uh, I'm going to focus primarily on, uh, well, so far it has been on Rage coverage. I've done the event briefing and uh, probably going to do an event debriefing. And uh, I'm also acting as assistant to Jacques with his writing of hardware. So you might see me in some hardware writings and reviews later on. But, yeah. Fantastic. Uh, officially, welcome to the team. Thank we, you. We, we love having you here. Um, next up, we're going to be talking about what have you guys been up to, geek-wise, in the last couple of weeks? Well, yeah, not too much because I've been traveling. So obviously, I've been to the Sony offices for a software summit, which is really interesting. Ah, so kind tell of working tell us on. A bit about that. So yeah, to really showcase on what's coming in terms of title release, which included um, the Last Guardian, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, God of War. So. Yeah, those are the kind of titles we, I had access to, and really, yeah. it was the, some of us about marketing around those titles. Really interesting. Nothing I can share at this point, but uh, yeah. We, we we saw the trailers yesterday uh, with the uh, behind closed, closed door sessions. The, yeah. Fabulous. Fantastic. Okay. But we'll dive into that a little bit more later. Uh, Dan, from your side. Well, I think the best geeky thing to happen this year, to me at least, is Stranger Things. TV oh, show. Yes. No, it's not a game. <laughs> it's not a game. Yes, but yes. we, like, we, we, we love everything from TV series. 
Stranger was Things was fantastic. I loved it. It was such a brilliant TV show, like actual optimistic TV for a change. You know, that was great. And everything else pales in comparison. So, <laughs> no. Also, the new Doom. That's been a highlight. It's just I've ridden that wave for the whole year. <laughs> <laughs> one, one of our guys actually picked up the collector's edition and it is amazing that, yeah. that the, the detail they've put into that figure oh my god it's just making me jealous <laughs> and a little bit angry <laughs> angry it's on special at BT Games I believe at rage at the moment so if you hurry down and go Shameless and grab it plug in. okay well that's where I'm going now <laughs> sorry guys I've been Dane I'm out <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh, yeah from my side Again, also, we just finished Stranger Things, uh, fantastic series, uh, the acting, those little kids, they are They're brilliant. The best, eh? brilliant, they are the best. Brilliant. And I uh, just finished uh, reviewing Gears of War, don't know if you guys have it's It's great. If you guys haven't played it yet, it's on the floor, brilliant, love it. Um, your side? Well, uh, firstly, I just want to touch on what you said about Stranger Things, Dane. That it's the best thing to happen to TV in a while, considering that it's not even TV. Exactly. Yeah. It's kind of strange, right? I mean, on dem video on demand and all that stuff. But I'm just glad that I got to watch it. I know. I'm sure. sure I got to watch it. I'm just glad it exists. <laughs> You know, what I really enjoyed about that is just the authenticity. You know, for someone like me, I'm going to give a little bit of information about my age here. I wasn't alive during the 80s, so <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's an interesting experience. You know, obviously we've all seen, or I've personally seen lots of archaic things from the 80s, but it's cool seeing them realized in such a modern and authentic experience. Well, I mean, the 80s was basically one giant meme, right? So, it's like, <laughs> it's just... Say, um, on one of the talk shows I was seeing, uh, I was watching the other day, uh, they had the, the the kid cast from Stranger Things on there, and they were playing a sort of like a game show sort of thing with them to try and uh, gauge their knowledge of the eighties, and they just failed so desperately. It was hilarious to see. I'll include the link to that in the article if, if the listeners want to have a look at that. It's brilliant but uh, moving on to the, the the main topic of discussion which is obviously rage tell us a little bit about your experience so far with this particular rage with, with this one yes oh, well same as always just busy 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 barely had time to see anything on the show floor just running around speaking to people seeing people you only really see once a year <laughs> and having a good time like rage is always fun no matter how busy it gets no matter how chaotic it's always such a good time and it's always cool to see everybody enjoying the thing that you know takes so much hard work to get done yeah and uh, from your side for me this is my fourth rage absolutely yeah. loving it um from, from 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 a just overall feel i think there's a lot more excitement this year yeah esports is playing a really big role this year which yeah, I, I, I i didn't expect to be honest but i'm excited about it i think um there's big things to come with nsa a lot of people investing in it now it's yes. really good so for me that's a bit of a game changer this year in terms of you know Pulling in different consumers and getting people to compete more and stuff, so it's really good because the industry is that show that the industry is growing. So yeah, really yeah. And virtual reality as well, which I mean, you guys have PlayStation it's VR and show. Huge at Rage this year. Yeah. Uh, we've got the Vive on the floor. We've got the PlayStation VR. Uh, Oculus Rift. The Oculus Rift is out mm -hmm. there. It's it's just it's it's a fantastic experience. I haven't actually had the opportunity to try out any of them. I'm fully planning on going out today or tomorrow, depending on if I get through the queues or not. Yeah. But, um, and if they hose down the headsets, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Got that sorted, don't worry. Yeah, <laughs> our, our, our dear friend Dan from Warner Brothers is actually doing a fantastic job down there. I, I saw him with his wet wipes yesterday. <laughs> it was, uh, interesting experience, but I can imagine. 9,000 people testing out a headset. Yeah, so we've taken it one step further. We've actually supplied bandanas for everybody who is trying it out. Oh, and wow. then we're, we're post. So, That's yeah, awesome. we've got it done. That's good, awesome. good, because you wouldn't want to. I went, I tried out PlayStation VR and got happy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> uh, <laughs> to be honest, I don't think people are even like phased by that. Okay? They just want to try it. But, I don't so know. I, I think everyone's phased by her. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, I have to say, yesterday I, I had an experience with the Vive and I was very cautiously. There was like a guy in front of me and I was like giving him a good look up and down before, you know, before it was my turn. And I was like, okay, cool. I saw the guy that was going to go next. I'm like, I have to go now. 
Ow, I don't want to be after this guy, man. Luckily I did. Luckily, uh, no pink eye or anything today, so... so. Yes. <laughs> no, that's a good skill. My, my fiancé tried out the Vibe as well yesterday, and uh, for someone who hasn't tried out VR before, it was kind of a, a fresh perspective. I tried out the Oculus Rift myself last year, so I could kind of relate. The motion sickness is still a little bit of a, of a present problem, and I don't know quite how the developers are going to sort that out. But another thing that she brought up yesterday, which is quite interesting, is the fact that if you've got these goggles, on the fact that you can't see your arms and legs you feel kind of disembodied you, you start to feel a little bit claustrophobic i don't know if you guys have had that experience with vr before so vr is a little different um in that you're playing peripherals as well so they yes. kind of are your arms and legs sometimes yes. in, the, in the game so depending on which game you play as well so i think that's different in that sense yes but i haven't had the opportunity to play on oculus or any of the others yet so i'd, I'd yeah. like to do that so i can compare the experiences but for yes. me i think vr will be different a little different in that sense yeah uh ultimate one of our new writers actually putting together a sort of comparison article uh, so our readers can go and have a look at the different experiences that's out there it's not necessary necessarily an article to say which is better because it's too early to say that let's be honest uh, it's more of a, of a thing saying all right this is what's available this is our experience leave it to the readers and it's up to you guys to sort of make up your own minds as to what are you going to be investing your hard-earned money into i would say that no matter which one's better i do think playstation vr has a massive leg up in that it is the most accessible version yes. of vr it's it's Market, so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so if you have a PlayStation, you can just get into VR straight away. You don't have yeah. to build a massive rig. You don't need to spend many thousands of rands, you know, upgrading your PC. Absolutely. And in terms of content as well, we've got like a strong line of content yes. of 50 games that'll, that'll be released. Ben Ben VR! So, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, Most I still want to get my hands on that. I've watched the trailer, that I think they released it at E3 this year. It is absolutely mind-blowing. And, you know, just just being the Batman is, uh, I'm the pretty dream. sure for any geek, it's the geek. <laughs> I'm Batman. Yeah, yeah. I'm Batman. <laughs> you can say that with confidence after this experience. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. I do have to say, what I'm also quite impressed with is, <clears throat> excuse me, the fact that uh, the price at which the PlayStation VR is coming out, I mean, it's substantially cheaper than the other two headsets, which... I, I'm not going to lie, I was skeptical at first, when you know, I, obviously Oculus and uh, the Oculus Rift and the, the Vive have been out for, for quite a while already. Um, I, you know, I thought, geez, compared to these prices, the Vive obviously being the more expensive one since it comes with all its light sensors and such. I thought, you know, I, I expect, I'm expecting the PlayStation 1 to be more or less closer to that, but I mean, it's, it, it, it surprised me definitely in the price. How much is it? Yeah, so we, we're retailing it between six and a half and 7,000 Rand, wow. so we'll have confirmation close at the time, but we're only launching in January of next year, so towards the end of January we'll be launching, so that's kind of the price range that we're setting in. Okay. Cool. I know um, I, 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 I was a little bit disappointed when they announced the, the, the price point for the Oculus Rift, yeah. um, but it's actually double because if you if you think about it, you've got to go buy a gaming PC that is pretty much able to do. Yeah, you, you're going to have to buy top of the range to be able to support that, and then the Oculus Rift costs pretty much what you just shelved out for that PC. Yeah. So. You know, in order of accessibility, I would have to say the PlayStation VR is definitely going to be the go-to yeah. when it comes to VR. I think it will actually grow yeah. to become the biggest just by virtue of that. Yeah. 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 I have to say that I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see what comes next. Because, yes. you know, this is still Gen 1. This is still the first anyone has tried of it. What happens next? And There's always a chance it'll just disappear. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm really hoping. Again. I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. <laughs> I'm really hoping it doesn't go the way of, of 3D did. Oh, I remember that craze when everyone was like, you know, play these games in stereoscopic 3D and it's great and stuff like that. But experiencing VR, I don't think it can. I mean, just yesterday, you know, a lot of problems that are, are currently persist with VR is not really in my opinion, how it feels to use the headsets, but the fact that once you have the headsets, the headset, there's very, <coughs> excuse that one, <laughs> there's very little for you to actually uh, play. I mean, there's there's lots of concepts and lots of tech demos, but there's very few complete games that are longer than maybe a one or two hours at most. 
you know, I with the Vive, I experienced a just a, a basic zombie shooter, a shooter who is, you know, they're dime a dozen, and non VR, they're also quite dime a dozen. But you know, that's only experience that captures you for a short period of time. But I'm glad to see that, especially for the PlayStation VR, that there's going to be a, a lineup to, to to assist the launch. Yeah. So as you know, globally, it's actually launching this Thursday, so it'll be available in the other territories from this Thursday. But obviously, for us, only early next year. So by the time we release, there'll be a really strong lineup of games available. Which is really yeah, good. that's fantastic. Very important question that I've, yeah. I've got to ask, and yeah. maybe you have the answer, maybe you don't. Yeah. How do you feel? Uh, how do you think um, you know long PlayStation's is going to be like when it comes to VR, like the PlayStation VR? Uh, do you think there, there's going to be a factor of fatigue or anything like that? On PlayStation itself or VR? Or VR? Well, uh, so. in general, but using PlayStation VR as an example, I don't know if you've had extended play experience with it yet. Not yet, not yet, outside of what we've obviously got access to now, but I, yeah. I, I don't I don't see it, see it fatigue, fatigue in any way, to be honest, I really don't. I think it's definitely one of those things you're going to have to, the more you use it, the more you're going to want to use it and get better use to the device itself. It's going to come down to content, yeah. you know? Yeah. I think it's really going to come down to content. The experience is amazing. And yes. I think that is really what's going to get people to buy VR is that experience. Because Which, it's something different, right? It's, it's not it's not like Innovation, say connect and I to like. Absolutely, I have to agree with you. Sorry. And I, and I like that PlayStation has got a hand in it because they they are very much for the gamers uh, to to reuse their often used slogan. And you know when when it comes down to it, at the end of the day, they have the gamers in mind when it comes to video game developments. And bearing that in mind, and with them entering the VR space now, I think we can expect a lot of games moving forward that's yeah. going to be utilizing the technology. I don't know if you, if you agree with that based on your experience. Absolutely. It's very sexy. Yes, for sure. <laughs> yeah, no, I just can't wait to see it. Unfortunately, you know, it was somewhat of my limited budget, but there's no way I could just shell out so much on like, I'm primarily a PC gamer, mm -hmm. so that, that already takes the options of the, the I know, sell the PC? Sorted. Oh, I can't do that right now. <laughs> <laughs> so it's spoken like a true stack in a core episode. Yeah, it's just my PlayStation <laughs> voice speaking. You know, it's just one of those things, since I, I'm limited between the two options I currently have, and both yeah. of them being too far out of my budget. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll wait on this bandwagon. You don't need time. food. You don't need a house. Of course, I agree with you. You need any stuff. You've got the Uncle Jam. It's you just need a big enough cardboard box to fit your PlayStation <laughs> VR and your TV. You know, like. <laughs> At that point, you wouldn't need a TV, would you? No. Oh, no. <laughs> I guess not. There you go. It's problem solved. <laughs> Sell your nice 4K TV. I have PlayStation <laughs> VR instead. <laughs> for a quarter of the price. <laughs> have you guys had a look at the board game selection on the floor yet? Unfortunately not. It was a full day of media for us yesterday, so I'm hoping to get there today. But excited about it. Same for me. Sadly not. I mean, I've had a look at some of the stuff that's on sale you know, at the show. and. Uh, Every year, it just keeps growing and growing and growing. It's very exciting, you know. It's like a whole, it's a whole different aspect of gaming. I mean, there's like an inherently social aspect to board games, which is sort of diminishing in in video games as things go more online. Like you're more, you're interacting with people in a personal space, and you get a lot of board games where like you're meeting, you're you're having to deceive people and and you know play Lie. games. Uh. And, Pretty much just lie through your team. <laughs> Love it. And it's fantastic. You know, like it's it's like a whole other it's it's that's sort of encouraging a social aspect of gaming that hasn't hasn't existed in a while. I feel as geeks uh, moving into the digital space, we, we, we're kind of losing that social aspect, and that's yeah, where yeah. Uh, board games kind of complement that sort of thing. And we, 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 we're seeing a massive growth of board gaming in South Africa in particular, and I feel that it's, 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 it's needed. You know, it's, it's great owning a PlayStation, owning a gaming PC, and everything, but you need that social aspect to function as a human being, yeah. as not, not only as a geek. And um, I'm, I'm, I just recently, uh, probably, probably about a year or two, discovered, rediscovered, because I mean, we all played board games as kids. Yeah. Uh, and crews, but, I hate them because all we play is Monopoly. Yes. <laughs> yes. I was just going to say that. Wow. But the, 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 the level of stuff that they're bringing out these days, it's mind blowingly awesome. And you wouldn't actually think that. Yeah. Well, I mean, you've got everything from, you've got, you've got the sort of simpler, simpler range of games that you can just play like in a social environment, just crack open a few drinks, open a box of cards against humanity and just have laughs just laugh non-stop you know or you could take the more serious side of things and go for your tickets to ride even though it's not that serious but you know it's games that sort of you know you end up playing for an hour or two and 
stakes are high and somebody's got a train, somebody's just taken a route that you really needed and you're sad now and I want to go home. <laughs> or even things that get higher than that. I mean, just think about like the three or four hour play session so you can like it some things like Risk or, or even now the new Game of Thrones board game looks really good. I, I, I've, I've seen things about it. It looks pretty awesome. Lots of lying, lots of deception, very much like Game of Thrones. Everybody at the table dies. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, hopefully it just stays on the board game. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It's Game of Thrones, man. You don't get to survive. But, but no slightly, game <laughs> slightly going back to Stranger Things, yes, we're going to probably revisit this a lot, a lot in this podcast, um, and, and still talking about board games. I absolutely love that they introduced Dungeons & Dragons, or, or, or more specifically a Lord of the Rings style D&D yeah. setup that they had going in the, in, in the show. Um, and it's how the show starts, right? Yes. I and mean, it's like the first few minutes, you've got these kids really passionately playing this game of Dungeons & Dragons. Yes. And I immediately knew that's me, I'm hooked. I mean... I mean, for the and long then, just sort of carries through the entire series. You know, the, 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 there's a there's a place called you know, Mirkwood uh, was one of them, and then um, I think the actual creature is it's named after. Yeah. yeah, I think they named it after a creature. It's either in Dungeons and Dragons or Lord of the Rings. Uh, I, I should have my geek card because I, honestly, <laughs> I don't know the, the reference. I don't know either, but it's probably Dungeons and Dragons. Yes. Yeah. Because it's definitely not Lord of the Rings. Yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah, I, I, I absolutely love that sort of geek reference yeah. in there. And they're all over the place, right? I mean, there's references to Stephen King in there. Yes. Ah, oh, it's just you guys are making me want to go rewatch it. <laughs> oh yes, yes. Hopefully, a season two is coming soon. It's been yeah, confirmed. It's next year. Eh? Next year. Um, and I'm not going to spoil it for, for for those readers who have not seen it. But that ending, it just leaves it wide open. Mm. Uh, although I did also find that it was quite a well-rounded ending, you know, I, I did want more, but I was also I was not un- dissatisfied with right. with the way things ended. I wasn't like, ah, I really, you know, they they left this on a cliffhanger that really needed a, a next season. It was sort of like, okay, cool, I'm I'm fine with it. I can see where they can go further, but. I'm satisfied, if that makes sense. I just said that Steve's hair gets the goal, you know, it's kind of quite on it. <laughs> but we'll come back to, to, to TV series in a moment. Um, tell me, what board games have you guys recently played? Uh, so I recently had to had to shell out a bunch of cash for Cards Against Humanity. Yeah. Yes, I know it's free to download and print, but I had to hand over some support money. Support the developers. Exactly. I can support the local you know, retailers as well. I mean, they've, they've got tons of this stuff that just needs Please buy our cards against humanity. But also a few other games I've played. I uh, played Spyfall recently. That is that is such good fun. It is just again, it's just people being dicks. <laughs> like that's all it is. And like um, those it's are just, the fun, the, yeah. the, the most fun party it's games. Incredibly social, you know, and that and that just makes it very special. You 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 see an entirely different side of a person if you play games like that. Like, exactly. It's very fancy. I really like Spyfall. Yeah. I have to say, I had, uh, unfortunately, I haven't had the chance to play, you know, traditional board games lately, but I've unfortunately been getting back into Magic the Gathering lately. I had a few friends up playing that. I mean, you know, it's more or less the same. Obviously, it's a trading card game, but sort of the same space. It's very social. I can you it with, unfortunately. <laughs> unfortunately not, because the game is... Not fun, but it's because expensive. of the yeah the price associated with it. If you consider the the price associated with a lot of these board games is pretty steep, uh, you know. But even still, <laughs> this is a hole I, I would prefer not to have dropped back into. Uh, <laughs> it's like cocaine, man. Expensive habit. <laughs> So it's gaming, but we, we do it because we love it. Yeah, and that's why we don't do cocaine, because you can only choose one or the other. <laughs> I, I, I saw something the other day, which I'm sure you guys will appreciate. Uh, if you don't want your kids to become drug addicts, turn them into a gamer. <laughs> exactly. It's as easy as that. They'll never have enough money to spend on drugs. Exactly. 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 And, it's and a hard choice. It's, it, it's really poetic, because... Uh, I find that as a gamer, it kind of turns you into an autistic person because you learn to appreciate things more, you know. Well, it enhances your imagination as well. Exactly, exactly. And I'm a reader as well. I like reading books. And again, with the board games as well, a lot of the stuff is very story driven. So your, your imagination is really stimulated in that way. Isn't there a level of escapism? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. We yeah. all need escapism because, you know, you, you, you a, a lot of gamers are adults, let's be honest. And you need a break from life, eh? Yes. The stresses of oh, everyday yes, life and your work and everything. 
it, it's it's just a nightmare. So the escapism is really something that's very important. And board games are really interesting with that as well because most of the most of the magic happens in your head. You know, video games are more visual. You sort of you've got that representation happening. But board games and Dungeons and Dragons and that sort of thing, it's all going on in your mind. So it like stimulates like a whole other area of your brain. And you know, I think it's fascinating. No, it, it, it builds brain cells. Drugs and alcohol <laughs> destroys it. Yeah. yeah, just to be clear, we don't endorse drugs. That's yes. drugs are bad. Drugs are bad. Okay. <laughs> okay. South Park. You started the comparison. <laughs> 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 yeah, but speaking of South Park, it's obviously on the floor, and um, I haven't tried it myself. The fractured butthole. Yeah. Yeah. When you say it out loud, it's even better. <laughs> right. Fractured butthole. Yeah, and you guys have obviously been following the news and 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 watch the trailers and everything so any thoughts on that so far? Obviously not having hands hand on time yet, but it's sad that it's been moved out though. Yes, I'm, I'm very upset about that. Yeah, the, it's coming out first quarter 2017. That's correct, yeah. It's been, it's from the, it was initially scheduled for December. My, my birthday is around about the time, so keep in mind, guys. Birthday <laughs> presents, you know. <laughs> Hello, fiance. Uh, listen, South Park's coming out. Um, she wants it as well, so... Oh, there you go. So you just share it. What's mine is yours. Yeah. But but we're clever, you see. We do the Xbox uh, sharing thing. I don't know if you're familiar with that. So we buy one digital copy and then we can both play it. So nice. we got to be clever with these things. But speaking of South Park, I, I loved the first one. It was such a good time. I mean, the, the amount of references to the show and it was... A, it's obviously just one giant piece of fan service, right? Like, I mean, it was like an episode of the show that ran for many, many hours. And super excited for the next one. But I must say, and this was quite hilarious when I heard about this, uh, they recently showcased uh, the new South Park game at one of the British game shows. And the footage that they show uh, actually, I think, broke a couple of child protection laws over there because it's very graphic. Yes! <laughs> and you nice. know how strict they are about protecting yeah, their children absolutely. over there, so it's, it was Yeah, here funny. we're a little bit more lax. <laughs> yeah, but still, Forget it, the kids. It, it is a very active topic at the moment, so... I mean, it's one of those things, though. It, it wouldn't be South Park if it didn't offend or break some rules. Like, yeah, it breaks somebody's heart. Oh, look what you've shown my child. I'm going to have to explain this to them. I don't want to do that. I don't want that job. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Any did, other interesting games that you guys have seen on the floor? I had a chance to play uh, For Honor earlier. Man, what a game that is. You know, one of the other writers at Geek Note, Jacques, me and him, we, we had a good play session, you know. it was how, they, how they've got it spaced out on the floor here is it's a 4v4, but everyone goes through a practice round first, and then, you know, then it's, they start, they put you into a match. And it's quite an experience because uh, you know, practice mode is a practice mode. As soon as you start, the gates of a castle open. Then the four of you run amongst like hundreds of these little grunt soldiers, and with one swing of your sword, you kill like three of them. You know, and it's it just feels so visceral, so graphic. And then you see the other, you know, you see the other enemy hero soldiers charge at you, and then immediately you're like, okay, cool. Now it's it's time to fight. You know, the the, the real the real battle begins. And it's just so, it's incredibly responsive. The combat, you know, you can really see it, it, it rewards skill. Because I, I was fighting a guy who was just swinging and swinging and swinging. He didn't last very long because, you know, eventually after you grasp that, that, that concept of the game that you can't just swing blindly. Um, I have to say, it ended up being such, we had about a... 10 minute play session or so it ended up being just such a, a fun experience eventually at the end um, so it sort of works the same way a MOBA does where it has two two factions pushing against each other over points and to capture a point you have to clear out all the grunts and the enemies you know, and then you capture a point and then it sort of ticks up on a on a ticket system right whoever gets the most tickets wins but there's this interesting little feature at the end that after your team has won before you can actually win you need to kill all all the remaining enemy heroes oh, nice. and it ended up being such a funny experience because so there we are 4v4 just facing off right uh, one of the one of their team drops first and then as soon as he dropped you know then it became a, a, a 4v3 and the rest of them started to and the last guy on their team saw the tide turning and he just decided to run right so there he goes he runs up the castle walls and now we all spot him getting away so all four of us just start charging after this guy right and now 
the, the teams are right next to each other, so he's standing behind us. He's, everyone else is like, go, go, go! And he's just like, ah, I don't want to look behind me, and he's just four of us are chasing after him. It just made for such a fun ending experience when eventually we caught him, so I'm really looking forward to that one. So. Benice, I think you should tell us about Injustice too, because that queue has been yes. going crazy. Yes. Yes. We did watched it honest, yesterday. I, I haven't had a chance to even view it yet. That's how hectic it's been, y'all. So, I'm, so what's, my what's hands in there? It's, it's really behind, it's very close to Wisconsin, content, so it is, it is gameplay footage. Okay. But uh, yeah, I haven't, to be honest, I haven't seen it yet. Okay. So my hands on day is really tomorrow when all the media stuff is off the way. Oh, well, so, it looks great. So, we we, we can fill just, in the readers on that because yes, we managed have to you? get it. Have you? So tell us a little bit about your experience with Injustice 2. <laughs> Oh, putting me on the spot here. Yes. So, um, <laughs> so I have. I'm not the the biggest fighting game fan, unfortunately. I I, I played a bit of the first one. You know, I had a friend who um, who had the game, so we played a bit of it. It was quite fun. I love I love the whole superhero theme of it, um, and that was great. Seeing it, you know, the first one was very visceral. I love being the Joker. He had just some funny abilities, funny quips. Then. Uh, so yesterday we went in and, and saw the Injustice 2. Firstly, it looks absolutely fantastic. The graphics engine is it's amazing. I agree. For those of you who don't know, it uses the Mortal Kombat 10 engine, so if you thought Mortal Kombat 10 was good, or looked good at least, um, it, you know, Injustice looks the same. And I have to say, there's... I have to say there's... Uh, you'd be in for more visual spectacle from that. There was a, a fight with Superman and a... Um, a Red Lantern, I can't yes, remember yeah. his name. Atrocitus. Uh, Atrocitus, that Atrocitus. is correct. And uh, one of Superman's... He's got a very bad case of heartburn. <laughs> and, a, and a purple kitty. He's got a purple kitty. Exactly. Yes. And you know, he uh, Superman did one of his special moves and knocked Atrocitus into the atmosphere and yeah. chased after him. Kept punching him. <laughs> now, you imagine Mortal Kombat 10 looks like. Now imagine him flying through the air and you see the fluffy clouds. Yes. However, getting to the gameplay looks awesome. I love the environmental effects. Yeah. Uh, I'm not so keen on the item drop system though. That I, I didn't like very much. So Injustice 2 is introducing a new system where after every match, a piece of loot drops. And um, they can range from common to rare. You know, some of them, all of them have a different appearance. Some of them have different stats. So yeah. some will make you do more damage in a certain combo, some will make you do more damage in a certain attack, uh, some also give you access to other abilities. And what I don't like about that, and John, if you want to... Yeah, I was going to say that um, uh, one of the interesting aspects, uh, there's obviously the RPG element, and you can upgrade your character and everything, uh, but but what, what makes it really interesting is your character improves over time. So if you're a diehard uh, fighting game fanatic, you spend six months building Building your character, you end up with a level 20 character that looks and feels amazing, and you end up having having uh, gained all this experience, and your friends are going to be jealous for one. And and the other aspect of it as well is, uh, and we, we we are fully planning on doing tournaments with this game when it comes out. Tournaments are going to be epic because you're going to have people. Who is going to spend? They're going to sink hours and hours of time into this game, leveling up their characters, improving them, and you're going to have tournaments between people. It's going to be epic. It's going to be awesome. I cannot wait to see what the community is going to do at this time. I have to say, just on that point, though, what I, what I'm not a biggest fan of then is you know the just the, the unbalanced fact of it. It's sort of especially fighting games, which have always been a uh, you know I'm better than you because well I won because I am a more skilled player than you. I'm worried that this might tip the balance slightly. Not that I have a problem with because you know it's it's never nice being the guy who just gets stomped all the time. Uh, it's just, you know, I, I, I'm a little worried about what comes next, especially if, if I, I, I would not want to say the words, but especially if, you know, there were perhaps some extra transactions or items that came out. But we'll see. I mean, what we've seen now isn't, it isn't, uh, it's not a overall picture. This is just an early build. So we'll see when the game comes out. We haven't got too much information. This is just the first iteration. No, I wouldn't be able to comment on on injustice just yet. Have you seen Dishonored? Not yet. 
You, you've, seen, you've seen it. Yes, yeah, we were Have you seen it then? I played the first one, I haven't seen the second one in action, but you should it looks play. amazing. Uh, it's still, it's still Kenico has it in okay, one so of we, the yeah, So what we do have, we, is we have a behind closed door session on Dishonored and Horizon Zero Dawn. Yes. So it's gameplay footage that you can basically watch. Um, we, they run every half an hour, so if you haven't seen it yet, I invite you to get done and watch They're it. They're right I next door to us. It's a nice, sweet one, so anybody's uh, able to uh, get access to it. And then, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I like the fact that you play. Um, I, I don't know what's the what's Emily. the Emily. Emily yeah. yes. she yeah. she's uh, she's like one of the protagonists. You can still play as Corvo. Mm -hmm. Yes, you could. Um, but Emily adds a, a new sort of finesse to the to the franchise, which I quite like because uh, she 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 just feels lighter you know, in the way that she moves and everything. And um, I, I I quite like. And I suppose this is carried off on over from the first game. There's this whole Victorian uh, airy fairy sort of feel to the whole story, Steam. which I which I like. Ste steampunk. Yes, yeah. I think that is the right way of describing it. Whale punk. <laughs> Whale punk. Yeah, that's. that's what I like. <laughs> and um, I, I, I quite like the direction that the developers took with with some of the characters, especially in Australia that we saw. You, you, you've got these uh, what I assume to be demonic uh, female characters. That's that sort of just lounging around their little base area. I think they were called witches. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And one of them is sitting like on a chandelier, sipping a cup of tea. Which is just where people sit. You yes, know, to drink tea. Yep, yep, yep. As one does. Yes. As one and does on a Sunday. Yes. <laughs> I have to say, what I, what I really liked about that is it's, it seemed like a lot of... The first game had a lot of steampunk technological enemies. You know, you had the, the guys that would walk around on the stilts. A lot of that. In this, there seems to be a lot more arcane as well. Like, these witches, I mean, there's a, a, short, a short description of this place where they, that, that they, they dwell in. And, um, you know, there was a... There was a woman sitting with like a cigarette, and as soon as she took a puff from the cigarette, her eyes just lit up, and there was red veins popped up all around her body, and then just disappeared afterwards. And there was uh, some strange dogs and all sorts of other weird creatures that didn't seem quite normal. You know, they didn't seem quite. This should not be. This should not exist in reality. They seem quite demented in that in that sense. So I, I really like that. I really like that change. I've, I've always been a fan of that. I mean, seeing what what what. What interests me the most is seeing how developers can create these weird creatures. Everyone yeah. loves a weird creature. Yeah. So, you know, it's uh, it's one of those things I, I'm really looking forward to. Yeah. One, of the, one of the aspects that I also quite like about Dishonored, in, in Dishonored 1, rats was a big issue. And uh, I, I don't know if you if you know a little bit about the, uh, about the, the, the development, but it looks like flies is a, is a big issue in the new game. Because uh, the, the, the plague has obviously not sort of solved itself yet. Or there's a it new one. Been, yeah. Or there's a new one, but I like that it, it, it makes it feel very real, realistic in that sense that we we we, we have this plague that is you know, sort of infecting this world and it adds a real world feel to it you you need to be careful of this sort of feel i don't know if you guys know what i'm talking about not a clue <laughs> I, I, I get what you mean it's sort of like a you don't really want to get too close to people, you know, it's one of those things of, wow, this guy looks weird, maybe I shouldn't, I shouldn't get close to him, maybe, uh, you know, I might catch a horrible disease and die, so. <laughs> we were just, we've just been joined by John. Say hi, John. How's it guys? Yeah, we're, uh, we're busy recording the one on the parade. Yeah, love it. Yeah, so, we, we've just been talking about Dishonored, you, I uh, think you also had the opportunity to see it yesterday. Yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't actually see it, I haven't seen it yet. But you I haven't? Know, I have not. You need to I, make uh, a plan. Yeah, but I'm a big fan of the previous game. Um, I need to know a little bit. <laughs> So, uh, from what I can remember, I think my favorite, my absolute favorite part of the game was uh, the fact that your world was affected by your choice. So if you decided to kill someone, for example, instead of just incapacit incapacitating them, you would create this um, scourge of rats to basically give you the worst ending, which I actually really dislike because I'm in favor of killing and, everyone and removing <laughs> as many bodies as I possibly can. I'm not really the James Bond tribe tries to sneak from one end to the end of the map and then accomplish my mission. I'm like, I want to kill as much as possible, so if I've got to run away, 
I don't run into enemies I could have dispatched earlier. So I was not a big fan of the entire um, I don't know, uh, dynamic of that method of actually implicating it, but it was a brilliant payoff at the end of the day. I really like because it makes you go against your general play style. Because I'm I'm just I'm just like one of those serial murderers. Yeah. And it made me actually think about my choices and decide, well, if I kill everybody here, then, you know, the world's obviously going to be in a worse off place. Of and that ending really makes you feel bad, morally. <laughs> so that's, what, that's what I like about uh, Orkane and, and Bethesda's uh, games. Uh, it, uh, every little thing that you do, you feel bad about it if you do, if you do a bad thing. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the amazing thing about the first design is that it brought back that sort of sense of player freedom, being able to do whatever you want, however you want to. I mean, it was still linear. With powers. And with powers. <laughs> but uh, it was still linear, but you could choose, like you say, if you wanted to be the, the, the mass murderer and attract all the rats, you could totally be that guy. Or if you wanted to, like, oh, okay, there was no not killing everyone, but, I mean, if you wanted to be that sort of stealthy guy who just sneaks past everybody, you could do that. And it was reminiscent of things like Deus Ex, Thief, and, you know, like a golden age very, of very immersive very sims. Yeah. Yeah. You know what's the biggest thing? Because this, I don't know if this is not you guys or whatnot, but when I launched that game, I got a Half-Life 2 feel. Yes, because the, I, because it was the same, it was uh, Antonov, eh? What's, what's his name? So, yeah. The City 17 designer. Yes. And that yeah. was brilliant. Yeah. That was brilliant because I, 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 it's like, it was just nostalgic. I just loved it. I loved getting back into a universe that is similar or, you know, exactly like it. I loved it. But do you know what I like about Dishonored 2? Because I have not actually seen it live. I've seen gameplay videos on the YouTube uh, addicts. I was another quick. Anyway, uh, what I do like about Dishonored is the fact that I hear that Emily's got a choice. She can either get the powers or not. Oh, is that the truth? Is that not the truth? Because I heard that that she's got a. Where she's did got you get that from? I, 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 I think, to be honest, I'm trying to think of the video revealed. Was either ECT mm -hmm. or someone else who had mentioned this might have been speculation made before the game was actually you know publicly available on the Alpha Play or whatever the case. But I heard that Emily could make the choice to either do it or not. So I was obviously incorrect. So she I gets her have no idea. <laughs> So she, she gets her powers outright, straight on. I have honestly no idea. I haven't seen that trailer. I haven't seen the speculation. Well, I, I would assume that she has the powers, you know, regardless of any choice. I, I don't know. Uh, so now I'm speculating. I don't know. Yeah, we've got a lot of speculation To my knowledge, she, she actually communicates with someone to get the back. All right, she's not born with it. Well, it's the same, same as like how what happened in the first game where you but communicate the, you know, with the outsiders. Oh, yeah, like the outsiders. Uh, but what, from what I heard, I'm, 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 I'm almost clear on this, that she could say no, but then she'd have to play the entire game without those abilities. I've heard the same thing as you. There we go. So, well, so someone's backing me up. I'm, I'm, I'm seem insane. Rumors confirmed. <laughs> it's done. <laughs> Emily just, can reject her powers. We're just going to take a two-minute break. Uh, Benice uh, has got to head out to a video shoot but uh, we'll resume in a moment Fabulous. and we're back and we're officially joined by jock now oh, yeah. uh, he, he just kind of dropped in before but now he's officially part of the podcast denise uh, looks mighty different she changed yeah. a bit <laughs> the polymorph potion is working <laughs> yeah but uh yeah Benice had to shoot off to go and join a video shoot and uh yeah, nice. So, nice i saw yeah, what you did there. last player last player uh, we, 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 we still have Dane with us and we're going to be talking about uh, Rage Setup. Uh, you were obviously uh, doing Setup and everything. Well, I've seen it go up. I mean, I don't really have much to do with the organizational side. Okay. I've been at the last eight or nine Rages here every year. I always get to see it sort of building up slowly. It starts from nothing and suddenly there's a show. It just appears out of nothing. The dome is empty and then it isn't. And it's fantastic to see it happen. I mean, they started setting up, I think, last weekend. And the amount of work and effort and stuff that goes into this, but the planning stage actually starts the moment this rage finishes. We'll have the, they, they will have the first rage meeting like two weeks from now, already planning for next year. Sort of what can we change? What can we? What should we do differently? What went wrong? What went right? What did we like? What didn't we like? And that's how. You know, Starts long and obviously the show. being uh, involved with, with with Rage for the last eight years, uh, tell us a little bit about how it has changed over the last eight, eight years. What it, what has improved? What is? Well, I think the most phenomenal thing is that like it's it's just like the efficiency of this thing that's had to sort of it's had to stay on on course despite this rapid growth. Every year there's there's significant growth. I mean it's 
it's fantastic that they managed to pull in as many people as, as, as it does. You know, I mean, Rage is, and the fact that it's managed to do that without completely destabilizing and just becoming a mess is it's, it's it kind has of ridiculous. Quite a big monster. It is. I mean, the the, the, the size of the show this year and the, the fact that the land just keeps growing as well and it always runs without a hitch and it's it's got it's come down to a well-oiled machine. You know, like it's 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 running smooth. I have to compliment Nag on the fact that uh, space management has become a dream this year. Uh, I, I see a lot a lot of people has been moved up in the land area to, to the second floor. Uh, the, 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 the overall space for the land has just improved tremendously. Uh, one of my favorite things at Rage is uh, the, 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 the Nag team has just opened up a, an entire, entirely new hall for the autistic uh, people. Yeah, the blue, the blue wing, right? Blue wing. Yeah. Uh, I love it. The cosplayers have been moved into the back there. It's awesome. It feels like its own little extension of the expo, right? I mean, you got all the board games back there. All the like, there's there's a, it's the artist alley, so there's a whole bunch of like like bespoke art pieces and artworks, cool things to buy, like steampunk skulls and stuff that somebody hand sculpted and crafted. It's fascinating going through there, seeing all the people dressed up. It's and the fact that they've got they've sort of got their own like their own little paradise to the side of the dome. It's really inviting, you know, the words blue wing. And you're like, what is yeah. that? One oh, is it's it's blue wing. Wing. Yeah. Oh, wow, action figures. Yes, exactly. T shirts. Artsy stuff, sketches. People wearing they, very little clothing. <laughs> yeah, well, no, we, we won't go to that. Right what I've got to give a claim to though is cosplay. Yeah. One thing I'm, I'm really, when I initially saw cosplaying at Rage, I thought, you know, this is a strange niche, you know, for certain people, and I don't completely agree with it. But <laughs> one thing, one thing I do love about, Nick, you've got to take a look at it. Like, let's just say a blatant example. You've got some hot chick who's just friends with a geek, and she's like, you know what? I'm going to design something for you, and I need you to wear it. And just cosplay. So he dresses up like your friend, for example, is dressed up here, like Lena from Dota. So she's dressed up as Lena. She realizes that geeks aren't all basement dwellers. You know? She starts realizing that this is the type of environment that she always completely had a misconception of. Yeah. And then she starts enjoying the concept. Two weeks later, she's playing Dota. Yeah. That's one thing I love about this because you incorporate in all these different media and platform types. That's one thing I've always loved about Rage, is it's not just about games yeah rage is, rage is for everyone yeah, yeah like yeah. i mean even beyond geeks like i mean yeah. if if I think it, file, there's something here for you if you love movies rage has pretty much been turned into a geek expo yeah it will it's beyond not that, just I games think. anymore it's it's hardware it's uh the cosplay it's board games it's now the artist alley it's everything to do with geeks. There's there's even a movie presence on the stand. Yeah. There's there's a there's a stand that's got life size stormtroopers that I saw. Yeah. It is. I mean, Hot ninety one nine is here. Like we got radio stations here exactly. broadcasting live from the show. Asus has some brilliant DJ throwing ears. Yeah. <laughs> Having I think, a good time. I think with Rage as well, what's really become very special about it is that, like you say, it's grown and it's it's encompassing all of geek culture. But beyond that, it's grown so big that even people outside of it who are just remotely interested, you know, like, hey, you know, what is this Rage Expo? What is this? What is Why this culture? Why so many people? Yeah. Yeah. I haven't played a game since Pong, you know, like somebody's dad, like, I haven't played a game since Pong. You know, and he comes here and it's like, it's amazing to him. Like, ah, oh, this is... This is fantastic. Him or her, just, this is this is mind blowing. I can't believe how far this has come. Look at what is this virtual reality augmented? What are these Pokemon Go's all the kids are playing? You know, it's it's fascinating, and you, I think it draws in people from all walks of life. No matter what what you know, no matter what you do during the day, no matter you're an accountant or I don't know, just, I don't know, you clean pools. I don't know, but it's it's just fascinating to everyone, and I think that's yeah. it's kind of magical, isn't it? It's like bringing in more and more geeks. It's growing. This and the presence people of this magic. Into geeks. Exactly. Because yeah, the thing is, to me, to me, a geek. The, def the true definition of a geek is just a very passionate hobbyist. Yes, <laughs> I, like that, I like that. one. Yeah. That's, 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 that's anything you want it to be. Exactly. Really. And yeah. and that's 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 one thing I like about it because. Through through your extensive experience that you guys have had with Rage over the years, yeah. and I mean, you guys were in, you did your Rage CT first time this year, correct? Yes, yeah, Rage Cape Town. How long did that go? Though? It went very well. I mean, if, if I compare Rage Cape Town, to, I mean, I mean, before I started working at Nag, I obviously came to Rage. I was a part of the land for many years. I was part of the smell. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I was part of the smell in there. And I apologize for that, but okay. So Rage Cape Town. If I compare it to the the first few rages, they were tiny. I mean, we were talking about them earlier. It's like a little circle in the middle of the dome. <laughs> 
with a bunch of landers, like 500 people like in their cage. I was one of them. And you compare it to this, if I compare it to Cape Town, Cape Town, first first time off the off the bat, and there were like 12,000 people there. Wow. It was amazing. I think the first rage was maybe a couple of thousand people. The very first rage, and for Cape Town to, to, to start off and immediately hit 12,000 people, that's fantastic. And that's yeah, amazing. I just have to comment on the fact that, you know, how you said that rage is for everyone. Yes. There's, there's something about the, the, the mysticism. When you walk through, I mean, like, I still remember my first rage. When I walk through those doors, and I just see, it, like, as soon as those doors open, you walk through and you just see all these lights and all these people and all these sounds, you know, it's just like, you, you look around and you're like, wow, it's this is sensory overload. Yeah, you've stepped beyond the veil, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's very, very easy to be awestruck the first time you work, you walk into an event like this. And I mean, even this is done. I mean, this is not E3, but it is fantastical. This is just a brilliant event. It, I, I, Thank I, you. <laughs> I, I spoke to Shani ZA yesterday. She's a, she's a friend of the site. I'm sure you know Chantal Alexander. Okay. She was saying that the one thing she appreciates about Joburg Rage, you walk in here and if, if you're a regular Rage goer, you know where everything is. Yeah. And I'm sure with the organization and everything, and I'm, uh, I know you're not really involved at, at that level, but you will appreciate what I'm about to say. You know where everything is. You know where the Mega ROM stand is. You know where Stir Kenny Core is. You know where Xbox is. And it's generally in the same place every year. Yeah, there's an element of familiarity to it, right? While yes. still bringing new stuff to enjoy, yeah. which is what you want. You know, you want people to know, okay, I'm going to run in. I know where the Mega ROM stand is. I'm going straight there. Boom, boom, boom. South Park, play South Park. Okay, for honor, here we go. Okay, Xbox gears of yeah. It feels like it feels it kind of feels like coming home in a way, yeah. like stepping into your room, you're like your command center. I, look, I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> Rage is back. And yeah, you know, like you say, you know where everything is. Yeah. And, and another thing that's really awesome about this year's layout, especially, and I'm sure a lot of people complained about it last year. Last year we had the issue where the aisles were a little bit sm uh, smaller, so people had difficulty navigating their way through the massive crowd of people. That is not such a huge problem this year. Well, we'll see, eh? We'll see. It's, it's not lunchtime yet. That's when, the, that, I mean, it's Saturday now. The big rush comes in. That's when the big rush comes in and it starts getting... Like, uh, looking down at the floor, it people, it does, eh? people aren't squashed up against each other. People are comfortably walking and the, the space is just very nice. Yeah. It does seem a lot more expensive this year, though. It seems like you guys did utilize the space a little bit better than previously. I think, I think we've, we've changed up the, the layout of the land and stuff. Yes, because, yes. because we've put the artist's alley also in the blue wing, like we were talking about, it has sort of freed up just add a little bit of extra space like you say so that it doesn't become it, it'll probably still get uncomfortable later but not as bad when you're literally pushing through throngs of people like your alt is just smashing a child out the way <laughs> like, like it's, it's, it's much more pleasant you know like when you when you know unfortunately you here people don't just look away and like eh you know <laughs> if you hit a kid in the face they just generally would like to follow you around for a while <laughs> stab you in the face with a plastic sword <laughs> <laughs> and you know one question I'd like to ask about that as we've seen Rage expand you know this is the first time well, that I've seen I thought you were going to ask me about stabbing people in the face with plastic swords I have zero experience sorry but yes as Rage has expanded <laughs> With the with the blue wing, because obviously I've also been here for, I think it's my sixth rage, possibly seventh. Um, seeing how it's growing, are you, you know, how, how are you expecting it to grow further next year? Is this going to be next year? Is there possibly going to be another wing open? Or there's always there's always. I mean, obviously with a, with an expo this successful. I mean, if you go to other expos like hobby X and stuff, yeah, they're busy, but it's not like this. It's sim it simply isn't. Like, this draws crowds of people that are kind of unbelievable when you look at them. Uh, so, naturally, a lot of other venues try and sort of, you know, court <laughs> the Rage organizational team, trying to get them to take the expo there, like, for example, Gallagher or Nasrec. And those are obviously larger, but the dome is such a perfect fit for what rage needs to be with the land it's, it's also it's it's like you say it's familiar and uh, the fact that it's right next to Northgate so the landers have access to you know, everything that Northgate has to offer uh, expanding within the dome I think if if we do work with it creatively it could still get even bigger I mean if I looked at last year I would have thought that there was no way yeah there was absolutely no way that, that this, this show could get any bigger and look at it it is this is probably gonna be way more people through the door this year it's gonna be and I think it'll be interesting to see how the dome continues to be used you know the space within this I mean theoretically it's not 
I mean, it is a huge, a huge area, but the, the fact that everything manages to fit in here, it's kind of, it's kind of unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Especially since it's kind of like a TARDIS. It's bigger yeah, it's on the exactly, inside. Exactly. <laughs> like, how did we squeeze all this into a phone booth? It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Especially since the, if I'm right to assume this, that the, the land also grows in number every year. I think I don't think it has for the last few years. I think it's it's I think two and a half thousand people. I think with the networking equipment and stuff. I think this is kind of a sweet spot for now. Right, right, right. Beyond this, I'm not really sure. We'd probably have to speak to Eric and the organization, the, the crew behind the VC crew behind the land. You see that? Yeah, exactly. But uh, they would. Uh, I don't know. It's been, I think it's been two and a half thousand people for a few years now. Expanding the, the, the land in any way? Ooh, there's been talk. There's been talk of a few things. I'm not sure I can <laughs> because, mention them. Because one of the biggest I, issues I, I've with got the got land a, is I've got a theory. Well, there's also some speculation that one of the ideas is to actually have an off-site landing area and an interlink there. But that's just that's just some hearsay. But uh, who knows? <laughs> who knows? You know, mean, there's lots of things going on. There, there's, there's always talk about doing other other events and other you know specifically maybe specifically land oriented maybe yeah. maybe not just just nice. a quick shout out to eric and um what's the lady's name we've been handing out they've been managing vc land for forever i know i know she's, she's, gonna kill me. she's gonna kill me i can't, I can't remember she's a quake i can't remember i remember <laughs> the first time i met her she kicked me she's gonna kill quake. me you, you're basically so gonna bad. get me killed now because i can't i can't remember quick. they i grew i grew up in front of Bell park Oh, and nice. they used to have a 50-man land, VC land, at the East Core, uh, Boxing Club at the last Saturday of every single month. And the very first rage I came to, they were the guys yeah, yeah. who were actually managing this network. They are an immaculate pair of people. They've, they've, got, uh, they've gotten so good at what they do, eh? They I mean, the fact that they pulled this off. And you know, with all their equipment and stuff, and it's always hitch. Well, I mean, there have been hitches in the past with yeah. power and stuff. As you grow, that's natural. You know, I, I know a lot of people complain, and you know, the natural thing. Oh, where did my power go? But <laughs> it's natural when you expand like this, and your your network gets so big, and you add internet to the equation, because that obviously had to happen a few years ago as well. To have a ten gig up and down connection, symmetrical internet connection, is unbelievable. Ten gig a second, and they just pull it off every year. With barely barely any hitches, it's fantastic. How do they do it? <laughs> you know what I you say from fifty man land. Yeah, the man, that's just the thing. Because when I realised they did this, I still remember the first time I came to Lanya. They actually grinded down the the big pin yeah. in my three point plug yeah, because yeah. I only used yes. those ports. And they did so that. There was actually somebody sitting in front. It was actually just grinding <laughs> down everybody's pin. <laughs> and well, he doesn't even have safety glasses. He's just sitting there. Graham Cable. He doesn't need safety down, goggles. And on go on it. And you I mean, from, from that, those humble beginnings, you know, to grant to what it is now. And I mean, them as a force, and then working with Nag, and working with Rage, and just pulling this off successfully year after year, it is, it's a magnificent thing. I don't know how they do it, eh? Like, I, I see know. them in the meetings, and they, they, they hardly ever look exhausted. I don't know how they do it. Like, every week, they'll come into the office, they're always chipper, and hey, what is happening? I know. Charmaine. They're, they're, vampire. <laughs> they're vampires. They're, they're, they are, they're vampires. <laughs> and they're all, they're all doppelgangers. The real, the real Rage crew actually disappeared years ago. They're on, like, an <laughs> island somewhere that they bought with all the living with all the profits yeah and, and this is just like this is just their, their doppelgangers have just come in they've like paid people to get like facials and if they surgery. die it's okay that's just like more that's fine there was, they've got like vats of them under the dome <laughs> there's a reason the, there's a reason the nag land will never end people 10 years from now 50 years from now even when you hear this recording and the nag land still goes on we were first to bring it to you <laughs> <laughs> but exactly they don't seem to have aged this bunch of people this is strange. Yeah. Even even Michael James, he still looks exactly the same as the day I met he's him never like six, six years ago. He's never going to change. He's always he's always going to look the same. He's always going to be the same. He's always going to look the same. It's kind of fast. Is Strike still around? Uh, yes, he is actually here. Walt. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he's here. Walt Pretorius. Yeah, yeah, I saw him yesterday. Uh, you always sort of see me always at these things and always you know, say yeah, hello. Does, does he still have his split personality? Split personality? Are you trying to get me in trouble? What's the personality? <laughs> What's the personality? Don't ask I'm, questions. Didn't, didn't he in the past? He used to write he, he wrote, two different entities. Yes, he had Ramjet. Yeah, Ram yeah. Oh, yes, he had Ramjet. Who oh, was the rage? You forgot about, about, about that. Yeah, he was Ramjet. Ramjet like, and Shrek. He was always like rambling on. Like, he, that was like his rant personality. I'm going to have a shout right now. Ramjet's coming out. Yeah, that was that was Shrek. Yeah, that yeah, was, he that was, was brilliant. He was, he was basically, it was, he was like the sole entity at NAG. 
really made me love the magic. <laughs> there you go. I'm sure he'd love it. Maybe we should find him later. Listen, Walt, you've got a fan sitting right here. I, I'm, I'm like telepathically trying to connect with you. Come, come to hospitality suite. Come here, <laughs> guys. You wouldn't just believe who walked in. No, no, no I'm just, it's Bill Murray. <laughs> <laughs> but guys, uh, we are running out of time, so let's just very briefly go over the last couple of items on the list. Movies, interesting movies you guys have seen lately. I'm trying to remember the last movie I watched. I watched Shallows or The Shallows. The shark one, yeah. The shark one. That was that was pretty lackluster. It was it was all right as a horror movie. I think if you've got a feel of the water, the sea or sharks, then it's probably up there. Is it is it as good as Jaws? Ah, don't no, say nothing, no. Don't nothing say is no. as good as Jaws. <laughs> no, but I really, I really want another like amazing shark movie. I want another shark movie that makes me scared to go in the water again. Yeah, My friend. You- uh, you know, Sharkzilla exists. And so <laughs> Sharknado. Sharknado. <laughs> Speaking of ridiculous. sharks, have you, have you guys seen the meme that's been making the rounds? It's like, this is what a shark looked like if he st- stepped on a leg. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that that was brilliant. 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 Um, I actually went to go and see Blair Witch recently. And not, not a good movie. Uh, 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 at least not as good as the original. But then again, the original was good purely based on the fact that it, the, it was the hype. Yeah. The and marketing campaign that boosted it. I mean, I mean, I'm I'm sure it's safe for me to talk about it now. But uh, you don't even see the Blair Witch in the movie, so what is the point? And the, even the show, the, or the the movie creators went on record to say that the creature you see in the movie is not the Blair Witch. So, what is the point? But in in, in the original, you also never you saw the Blair Witch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Near, no point. I think you I think, hear a lot about her. I think that's a value. That's what scared me. You know, I was not scared to do the entire movie. I'm talking about the first one. Until I saw the guy standing in the corner. Oh yes, and I remember that story that they told, and I was like, "Shit, yeah, this is where <laughs> it all comes this, together." This is I, terrible. I, I, I do they like expand the, on that in, in the in the sequel? Like, not the sequel. They don't explain why. It, well, they kind of do because, uh, as minor spoilers, uh, you have to not look at the creature, otherwise it kills you. Oh, yeah. so that's so why they're standing in the like corner. Doctor Who angels there. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. But um, they kind of mislead you because. Uh, the, the, the lore in the movie sort of explains that the witch was killed by the villagers and she was she was strung up on a tree and and then later on in the movie it's like one of the characters expands further on that and says that they actually put weights on her arms and legs and then you look at the creature and the creature has got these elongated arms and legs and then you think to yourself but okay that if, if that's not the if that's not the witch then what where does it? the creature fit into the, the, the whole mythology? That's the Slender Witch. Yes. <laughs> Slender Man. Speaking Witch. of Slender, there's a rumor going around that they're making a Slender Man movie. I would watch that. I, I, would, watch would. That. I would watch I would that. Watch the that. games have been kind of meh. Is it just is it just gonna be a movie about somebody collecting pages like in, in the forest? <laughs> no, I don't trying think not so. to look at Slender Man. Uh, look, there's a lot of potential for a horror movie based around the Slender Man creepypasta yeah. mythos. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of creepypastas. I don't know if you guys have read any. I know for sure the slender one was fantastic. I <laughs> yes. love that. It's great. Then you get uh, the, the, my my one of my favorite is. Um, something cove I can't remember but the, the, the basic the basic gist of it is uh, people are on a forum and they're talking about a cartoon series about a pirate that collects ki- is kids skins wow and but then, but then like it's that's, where the, where the, where, that's not the creepy part the creepy part is the the, uh, the one person says he, he describes the show the other person is like I remember it too and then the older brother was like but there was never a show like that you were always just looking at static on the TV screen creepy that is, really creepy. That is very creepy yes. I like that though I like it's, that stuff like that that to me is really cool horror yeah, yeah. Oh, well, especially when it catch you, catches you with a twist at the end. Yes, it's really logical. Logical. And that's and that's why Slender Man works as well because it's creepy yeah. horror. Yeah, exactly. I think the most recent movie I watched. I think you need to continue what you're saying because you're adding on to no, no, what you're no, saying. No, no, no. I, well, no, I, I just want to cover actually games being made into movies. Yes. I mean, the most recent mention of Gears of War. How do yes. you guys feel about that? I'm okay with it. I mean, if, if they want to do it, I mean, if, if it... Uh, 
I don't know. I feel like it not existing would be sadder than it yes. existing. You know, like I'd rather have it, even if it's terrible, whatever. I, but, no, but you know they're saying, I, they're you know saying that Gears of War is not going to be a faithful adaptation to a story in the game. But that's just hearsay at this stage. But see, I don't know. There, there, there is a very possible expanded universe of it. One of, one, of, one of the missed points of the Gears of War series, because of the multiplayer being so popular, is that people don't understand that we were the invasive aliens of the planet. Mm -hmm. We were the aliens attacking yeah. and yeah. that one the, the over the world. The natural yeah, inhabitants. Right. Yeah. I mean, humans were just being the dicks they are, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. it. But you that's the thing I loved about it. It's something that goes completely amiss. If people are like, no, I can't wait to be a kid and you know, stomp the head of locusts. But we invaded a planet. Yeah, come on. We're guys. the bad guys, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we're killing the inhabitants. Yeah. After they'd given us, they'd literally said, okay, listen, you guys can live on the surface. We're cool with this. We've been invaded. We sort it. And then we decided, okay, well, you've got emulsion. We need that power. And yes. I love that because the thing is, we're saying, in the, we're living in an age with SpaceX, you know, trying to get like reusable space engines, yeah. you know, to go and send pods out of space and stuff like that. And we're looking for planets to inhabit. We've gone from an era, like in the 1960s, when we were making movies about being invaded by planets, and we're living in an era where we're envisioning invading other planets. Colonizing more. What, what a time to be alive. <laughs> what a time to be alive. Yeah, one I, one hat I just want to. Oh, sorry, please. No, 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 go ahead. Go. I want to change the subject, so please continue. I, no, I've actually. <laughs> I, actually, I, I actually do have <laughs> one more thing to say about video game adaptations. I'm of the firm opinion that. Uh, the guys at, at Ubisoft, they're busy making this Assassin's Creed movie at the moment. Well, I think it's wrapped filming already and this is post-production. They've got the right idea when it comes to video game ad adaptations. Um, instead of trying to retell a story, like start a new uh, thing, uh, I propose that expand on the universe. Don't try and retell a story. like. I, I think that Will of Warcraft or, or the Warcraft movie made that mistake. I was they, they're, they're, starting a, they're starting a brand new story. Assassin's Creed, on the other hand, it's set in the video game universe. Mm -hmm. That's already been established. The lore is there. Yeah, that is the proper way to make a movie. Well, Assassin's Creed is an interesting one, right? Because yes. I mean, that, that that has been established throughout the video game franchise itself that you can have different stories, you know, coming from different areas, you know, different characters, different timelines, different ancestors. So it's really easy for them to do that. Like the story is set up for them, yeah, so they can actually... But that, that's one thing I like about it, because the thing is, it's, 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 it's beneficial for everybody, because it's beneficial for the gamer, because we're seeing, we're seeing a portion of the story that's based on the expanded universe. And it's beneficial to them, because I'm going to play the game to know what Desmond's story is, yeah. and I'm going to go and pay to watch the movie to see what the other character's story is. Exactly. And that is, that, that's beneficial. That's why I'm not too... I'm not too upset about Gears of War, you know, maybe not going to, it's nice to have a cameo. Yeah. You know, if Marcus Phoenix is in there somewhere, you've got something, you know, related, relating to maybe it's one of the combines, yeah. you know, or something like that, it would be pretty <laughs> cool, but it's, 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 it's basically just a tip of the hat to the guy gamers who are familiar with, with the franchise, you know, exactly. but for, from a media and even as a publicist type of point of view, you want to make that money. Yes. So exactly. obviously, get them to play the game for that story and get them to pay for the movie to watch that part. I think yeah, it's brilliant. It's kind of like a synergistic relationship exactly you know, like the game feeds into the movie movie feeds into the game attracts. without ever really touching it. And, and that's brilliant and they don't need to they don't exactly. need to they don't. Yeah. Yeah. Just. I think that's the best way to do it yeah. moving on to tech which is uh, a dog's baby um, tell us a little bit about your experience with tech on the floor oh well this, this is this VR is definitely the focus this year without a doubt I mean um, we've got everything down there. we've got oculus we've got five we've got a PSVR which I'm gonna be testing on shortly because I see nobody else is at that stand Me too. Uh, so I'm <laughs> quite keen I'm first <laughs> <laughs> but on, on the other hand you know one thing I'm, one thing I was actually quite amazed by this is something I, wanted, I really want to mention is Pantronics um, I am I'm in the favor of the consumer when it comes to all kinds of things technology because I am a consumer I don't I, everything that I own I purchase so I'm, I'm one of those guys who spend three months you know trying to find the correct tech like the right keyboard for me and then I finally even the day I'm about to buy it, I just can reread some reviews to confirm, you know, I this is really the product that I want. This, this one, uh, yes, yes, mom, <laughs> this is the right choice for me. <laughs> That's basically how I feel every single time I'm going to buy something. And one thing I'm really, really liking out on the floor is that 
um, especially with a company like Fantrax, is they're trying to focus on all media types. Like Rage is trying to attend, you know, you're trying to attend every single type of media fanatic out there. Guys are like music, guys are like movies, guys are like games, guys are like console games, guys are like PC games. Companies like Fantronics are literally feeding into that at the moment. I mean, they've got a series of headsets for every single platform. Yeah, which is and, great. Eh? And, and the thing is, they're encompassing everybody. They've got wireless headsets. At the moment, everybody's following brands like Beats, you know, that was just poor churches by Apple. Um, they're trying to follow the main trend. And I'm so happy to see that there are distributors out here and developers out here that are focusing on bringing their products to light and bringing it to the consumer at that end. So I'm, I'm quite ecstatic about that. In the tech field, I see there's some crazy overclocking going on by the Rebel Tech stand. Yeah, that would be that would be Neo, one of, one of the Neo guys nuts. as well. He's, yeah, sorry, he's, he's having a jewel. Eh? Oh yeah, he always time. has a great time. And they're, they're actually doing like a workshop. So they're actually, they're running, I don't know if they're doing a competition sort of thing this year, but they're actually teaching people how to overclock. Yeah, that's a, there's a work, it's a work, it's a right here. MSI and you guys are doing it together. Uh, yeah, it's, it's collaboration. Like a partnership. Yeah, yeah, it happened at 10. No, that was pretty good. I know that Zen did extensive coverage on it. Yeah, mm -hmm. unfortunately, they, they started late, so I had to make make wins for the podcast, but they, they were continuing all day, so I'll go back. Oh, we'll, that's, we'll, yeah, we'll go catch up and see what's going on. I've always been a little bit terrified of overclocking, especially when you get to ni ni liquid nitrogen. <laughs> of course. I have, <laughs> since a young age, associated non liquid nitrogen with demolition man. And thought that if it touches you, it freezes you solid. I know for a fact that it will evaporate or, before it even touches my skin. Or the T1000, eh? T1000. <laughs> yeah. But that is, that's the association I've made. So when I see them there doing it, I always like take a step back sure. and just... Those guys are crazy, yeah. It like, is like, nice like, I, I used to watch Nero like in the office. He used to do weird stuff. Like he used to like pour it in his Coke and stuff to cool it down. And yeah. I was like, hey, you can't do that. Like we used to... You're going to freeze your lungs. <laughs> no. He, had, like, he used to have canisters of the stuff in the office before. Well, he, he lives in Taiwan now. So like, but he, he used to have canisters of stuff in the nag office. Like, he said, just randomly, have, hey, what's that? Oh, that's my, that's my LN2, guys. And then we used to like, obviously like, like a bunch of excitable children. We used to, we once put a, a nag magazine in, in a, like a bath of liquid nitrogen oh, to see awesome. what would happen. And like, it didn't actually work very well because it's still just liquid. Like you, you drop it on the floor and some of the pages shatter but the book, the, the magazine just like, sort of look back up That's and it's like, why are you doing this to me? <laughs> Don't you guys love me anymore? <laughs> and it was, yeah, it was kind of fascinating. Obviously like, like I think we, we, we once put this as kind of cool, but it was dead anyway. I think we put like a cricket in there and then shattered it like a dead cricket. To, see, to, be, to be clear to, to the readers that's listening, we do not endorse destroying magazines, especially like old <laughs> nag magazines, because those things are actually Collectors, items, they're the holy oh, grail now. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, but I mean, that's what we used to do. Like, we used to just get, like you say, liquid nitrogen. It's terrifying. It's it? Yes. But it is. I mean, it's a terrifying thought because as a child, you associate, you know, some dude's head being kicked off because it was touched by like liquid nitrogen. Yes, yes. So, you know, like, I don't want that to happen. Yeah, to anyone. Yeah, it's like, no, it's cool. I'll you guys play along. Go I'll, 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 I'll spectate from a distance. Another thing that's quite keen, but I do hear they're only getting it later, um, is um, the Xbox Slim EJ, yeah, which is pretty cool. It's actually on display at the Xbox stand. Uh, it's, it's not switched on, so you can't really play on it, but you can actually see it live in person at Reg this weekend. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah, well, I've, I've heard there's, there's number one, there's, there's, no, there's no date on release in SA. At the moment, that no, no, going to be disclosed. They, they haven't announced yet when it's being released, so but we we are eagerly waiting for announcement from Xbox South Africa on that one. Yeah. Um, just uh, quickly, uh, just to end things off, uh, some news. Uh, we have the Brotherhood on the next podcast. Uh, the developers behind the excellent Stasis, Woo, the, Bischoff. Bischoff. the Bischoff Bros. Yeah, and. Um, uh, we've, re we've actually got the, the, the next podcast after that planned as well, but uh, more details on that later. Um, we just want to take this opportunity to thank uh, Dan Remendez for joining us on the podcast uh, for, for the very special Rage edition. Uh, Benice is obviously not here with us anymore, but uh, if you're listening to this later, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Zane. Thank, thank you, Jock, for popping thanks, in. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for having me, guys. This has been fun. Awesome. Thanks for your time, buddy. Before we go, uh, just tell us a little bit about your uh, where, where people can find you on social media online. So, so on Twitter, I think we're at Nagkoza. Uh, Facebook is facebook.com forward slash nag. And our website is www.nag.ca.ca. And uh, your personal Twitter, if people want to follow you? I'm not on social media. You're not? <laughs> I'm not on any social networks. I'm sorry. Okay, well, <laughs> sorry. if, 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 if no, people do want to get in touch with, with, uh, with Dane, You'll find his contact details on the... Find me on the rage website. floor. Actually, don't. Don't come to my house. Don't come... <laughs> <laughs> Give him a call. My, my phone number is 082... Yeah, yeah, please don't come to my house. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you very much for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me, guys. It's been fun. This has been the Geeknode Podcast. Thanks, guys.